Hell yeah. Cool. Feeling ready. Okay. Feeling good to go. I think so. Let's do this shit, dude. Episode 36, yeah. Tyler O'Brien, my <laughs> man. Thank you for coming through. Hey, thanks for having me, man. <sighs> dude, it's been a long time coming. We're trying to I make know. this happen. <laughs> dude, Just I know. hasn't worked out. The universe hasn't always been kind. Yeah, uh, work. <laughs> <laughs> and now the fucking rain, dude. You yeah, come here. It's well, like finally, a finally, fine finally, day and it's a finally monsoon. I'm here. Finally, I'm excited. Finally, we're here, dude. I appreciate you coming through. <sighs> uh, before we dive me. in, I've yeah. been like doing plugs at the end of the show, which seems dumb that like no one makes it to the end of the show. So it's yeah. like promote stuff that is dumb. So off the top, dude, uh, when do you have shows coming up? When is Endeavor playing shows? What is happening oh, in the immediate see. future? Off the top of my brain, October 27th, I want to say uh, at a skate park in... I want to say New London. I'm pretty sure I'm not 100%. A skate park in New London? Uh, I'm not 100%, but I think it is in New London, I think. It's definitely uh, a skate park, but maybe in New London. Yeah, I'm not 100%, man. I'm on my brain. I'm just, I still got work bone on my mind right now. But uh, let's see. The next one, November 4th. That one is a big one with a bunch of locals. That's yeah. uh, Sync With Me, Hell yeah. Somewhere To Call Home. Um, there's, there's uh, Let's see. There's there's just a lot of lot of Dude, lot I, of bands for that one, but that's that's gonna be a good show. Hell yeah, and where's that one? That one is uh New Hampshire. Fire, okay. Up north, getting yep, the whole thing. I'm Have you played this skate park in maybe Nolan before? Or? Um a while ago. A while ago. A while ago. And it's been a while, so I don't exactly even remember the name. I played there once. Once. Is it like uh is it like are you in the middle of the bowl? Are you like in the middle of the skate park? Like uh, what do you literally mean? Literally it's like Everyone's got their ramps, you know, their ground rails, whatever. Yeah. And then to the right side where there's this, this like little dip, this half pipe. Hell that's yeah. like where the stage is. And everyone can kind of just chill it kind of in the middle of it, which that's is kind of cool. So yeah. it's like, it's different. That's it like is cool. Though. The classic like 2000 music video. Is that yeah. like cool? And I've yeah. never done that. And it's one of those like, I don't know how I would do it. Cause it's like, I don't know. It's so tacky where it's like, if you're going to do it, you have to know that it's tacky and like yeah. either choose to do the tacky thing or find some new spin on it. <laughs> and I don't quite know which of those two camps I would fall in, but I'm always like, that's on my to-do list of some day yeah, of like, I got to film in a pool. I got to yeah. film in a or, yeah, skate park, a pool, it something cool, like that. It was cool, man. I was like, oh, wow, they're doing shows over here. That's pretty sweet. But I guess that's, that's kind it. of a normal thing. And I'm, yeah. to me, it's like, oh, wow, that's normal. Shit. All right. Whatever. Yep. <laughs> uh, apparently it is. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> my, my quick little plug here uh, is yeah. I have a music video coming out for Chain Twist at the of the week yes. uh, and they are sick as hell we've been working on that video for a while and a lot of stuff went in behind the scenes so mm -hmm. i'll tell more of that story once yeah in the couple yeah, weeks but whatever nice. but my quick my quick two cents yes. is chain twist dude chain twist new metal um hell yeah dude let's make it happen yeah okay. left to suffer dude i saw you a week or two ago yeah. at <laughs> left to suffer headliner i was so happy to see you man <laughs> it was crazy dude so you guys have been busy you guys been playing oh. shows all over the place all over man all over although this is the first time all year we've been at webster hell yeah so, okay. and as you know man we've uh, been growing there for over the years for a long time so, so long. for me it was so weird being there only once in the, in yeah. the year so it was kind of it was like it was it was a big deal it was a big deal for us we were hell really yeah. happy about it we were really excited and uh, I was a kid at a candy store, man. I love Distant. I love Left to Suffer. Unreal. And, uh, you know, yeah. even if I wasn't opening for that band, I would have gone anyway. I was I was a little kid. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's going to be the best show to play. Is like I yeah. would have been here anyway, and then to be able to play on top literally, of it is the best. Literally, literally. That's interesting. I, I've never had that, right? Because in shooting shows, it's like I... I guess I would have gone as a fan and I would have gone as a photo, but like it's a very different experience somehow. And like, yeah, you kind of get to have like your experience and then the same experience that you would have had anyway. Like it's a better like yeah. lead in. To it's the, a little bit more of a connection too, in a way. Cause it's like, you get to see how they are, you know, like mm -hmm. you just, they're not just a name, you yep. know, they're also people, you mm -hmm. know? So it's like, you kind of get to see how they work and how they do their, uh, their pre show workouts, you know what That's I mean? Which is really cool. Yeah. It's different. If you're looking on the inside of it, you know what I'm saying? Not everyone, who listens to the band can see the inside of what they do and what mm -hmm. they do to prep before they play. So I actually kind of find that interesting because, you know, depending on the person, you can have a conversation with them. You can kind of see how they do, how they, you know, just construct themselves as a band yeah. and have a full fledged conversation about it. And it's actually really cool. It's one thing I actually really enjoy about opening up for bands. I never thought about it that way that like, yeah, I've always thought that the the big benefit there is you get to play in front of their crowd. And so that is yeah. the, the on stage benefit. Of course, that's also true, but I never thought about the, the load in time where you get to yeah. brush elbows with them and you it's finally different. get to it's different. Yeah, and get yeah, the yeah. scientist brain. <laughs> <what they're kicking laughs> yeah, no, I don't yeah. I know what you're saying, but yeah. yeah, that's one thing I actually look forward to. It's different, but it's cool. Hell yeah. You learn a lot. You learn a lot. Uh, how did the show go? Everything, everything oh, it went plan? smooth, man. I was I was really <laughs> happy about it. It went very smoothly. Uh, I uh, hit a little too hard up there, but you As know you me, do. man. I'm all, I can't sit still. I, yeah. I, I can't I can't do it. But uh, other than that, man, everyone did great. 
The crowd response was amazing for all the bands, honestly. It was a great turnout. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. Even before I was playing, I went to the merch table for like half of those bands <laughs> bought merch before I even played. That's so the, I get the VIP like, pass. It's yep. like, ah, I'm going to cop that, cop that. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> so, you can put all the money right back in. <laughs> I like it's someone, yeah, someone gives your merch table 20 bucks and Literally. you just split and you take your five bucks and you have the next merch table. And it's like, what, what can we do here? Yeah, support, support. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Uh, good shows are always a great thing, but they're way less fun to talk about than bad shows. Oh, <laughs> is there a time man. in memory where your drum set blew up where oh. no one showed up? Yeah, what is the, the one that comes to mind? Uh, one of the shows, the worst ones that came to mind. Uh, all right, so yeah, I'm not going to say any names. Of course. I'm of not going to say names. Yeah. But I had a show recently. Um, the bands were amazing. No problems with the bands we played with at all whatsoever. But the sound guy, I wanted to rip him. Like, and I'm usually <laughs> okay. a nice guy, but this yeah. guy was not listening to anything. I was like, hey, man, can you turn up the monitors? I can't mm -hmm. hear anything. And it's just first song goes in, I'm literally struggling. And mm -hmm. I know people that know me in the crowd, they knew I was struggling. So I'm not trying to lose my composure. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, man, can you please turn it up? I can't hear anything. And then this guy's trying to have like a full-fledged conversation with me <laughs> on stage in front of everyone <laughs> yeah. mid-set. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. You're in the like, middle of blast beats. And he's like, oh, can you tighten yeah, your snare? Literally, and you're like, though, no. bro, literally, <laughs> though, man. It was like, that was one of the most frustrating shows I've ever had. It was just like, he wouldn't listen. Yeah. He was trying to have a conversation with me. And uh, I'm also trying not to be a dick and saying, hey, man, please do your job. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But it was a good show overall. It was just, that was one of the, I will say, that was one of the worst shows I personally have ever yeah. played. I will say that it was, yeah, never again. <laughs> That's tough. How do you <laughs> never like? Never again. Uh, uh, I think it's also a weird thing of like you don't want to give the sound guy too much to do because then he's going to cut time from you. Like, well, that too. You, like I said, you don't want to be a dick, mm -hmm. you know. But like when it gets to the point where the sound guy is not putting out sound in your monitor so you can hear your band, mm -hmm. there's a problem. <laughs> there's a problem. And I asked the other bands if they were having the same problem. Yeah. They were. Yeah. So it's like throughout the entire set, it's like people were struggling. You know what I'm saying? So it. It is what it is. Like I said, it has nothing to do with the bands. It was just that sound guy specifically was giving me a hard time, and I was not having it. I was not having it. And I was did, like, boys, never again. <laughs> never did you get again. any sense from the crowd that they were having issues hearing, or was it like your um, wedge that was? Uh, at the first track, they were having some issues hearing the whole sound. The, like the sound as a whole, they mm -hmm. were having some trouble. Um, and then the next track, they could hear, but I couldn't hear specifically. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So even the first song they were having a hard time hearing the set as a whole as well. So it's yep. like, just in general, it was just a rough start. It didn't start well and go downhill. It started yeah, downhill. And yeah, just... it was like, oh man, there's gotta be an upside to this. And ah, there really wasn't. It yep. was like, we were still tight as a band. Luckily, the guys kind of understood that it was hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, technically, I mean, band wise, we were all still pretty tight. Okay. So I guess I'm, I'm kind of proud about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was still, dude, I, that was hard. That was for me as a musician. Mm -hmm. That was it that was the drummer as the the lead in the rhythm department. Yeah, and, yeah and it was complicated. It was very complicated. Uh, and you don't have that. any ears, right? It's just your wedge that you're rocking no, off of. I I do have in ears. I don't use them. Um, usually when me. we play, what? it's like there's two sides of the world with this. There's okay, just yes. two sides. We got um, time for both of them. Yeah, probably. no, I was gonna say. So I prefer um, monitors just because I'm such an energetic drummer. Mm -hmm. I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. So when I use my in ears, I can't I can't move the way I want to move. It's believe it or not, okay. I, I'm just such a all over the place drummer. It's just hard mm -hmm. for me to stay in control with the in-ear system. And is it the wire? Like it's the literally the wire. wire. Like I've tried it and like it just the way I the way I am, it's just it's just every time I'm doing certain things or I'm going a certain way, it falls right out and it's just the most frustrating thing. Gotcha. Um so I like it obviously for the sound, but yeah. for the comfortability, I don't like to use them, you know. And it is what it is. Yeah. It's just I'm an energetic drummer and I can't sit still. That's yeah. just that's just my preference on it. Okay. And I know everyone's gonna die in a hill about it because like I'm not yeah. dissing in ear systems at all. I think they're amazing. Yeah. But for me personally, it's just hard for me to do what I want to do comfortably. So that's just me though. 
That's uh, just me. The other version of that argument I've heard, and I think it was a drummer of Knocked Loose, and I'm always like mm-hmm. scared to to quote someone when I don't quite remember <laughs> on like a public platform. You're like, oh, are you sure it was the guy from Knocked <laughs> Loose? Good thing. Be careful, uh, Peter. <laughs> canceled. Canceled. <laughs> I'm trying, dude. It's a matter of time until something I'm slips kidding, out. Man. I'm kidding. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just He, I believe, uh, they play without click track. They play without in ears. They do. They so, do. And it's because he likes to have like a very physical control of the tempo of the set. I yep. feel like with Endeavor, you guys are fast enough. Like, is that still a thing? Like, with Knock Loose, it makes sense to me that they're kind of like almost down tempo, I guess is the word yep. I would use, that that makes sense to me. But with mm-hmm. Endeavor, it sounds like not having a click would be a nightmare. And this scenario of not being able to hear the wedges mm-hmm. is like so far from ideal. Well, kind of like what you were saying, like he's very, he likes to be in control of the tempo. Mm-hmm. And again, they're very down tempo. But there's also from fast parts in there too that mm-hmm. he needs to be on top of as well. Sure. And he does not use in-ears at all. So it's kind of like, Going on top of that, like tempo wise, thank God, like I said, everyone in my band, we're, we're very, we're very tight as a band. I played mm. with these guys for years. Yeah. And I'm talking, we can get into that, but uh, we are all very connected. Mm-hmm. Like we are all, if I, if someone makes a mistake, the other one will cover for them. If I'm going to go faster, they know I'm going to go faster. If mm-hmm. I'm going to go slower, they know I'm going to go slower. And not everyone's like that. Not no. everyone is uh in tune to that, you know, but uh, with mm-hmm. us, you know, it works. Luckily, it does work. But then you have <laughs> problems like what, what just happened where yeah. the sound guy's not, you know, doing his job mm-hmm. and we got to struggle a little bit. Yeah. But we got the skill to make it work. Mm-hmm. But it shouldn't always have to be like that. So there's there's pros and cons to it Mm -hmm. i will say that it's a very interesting subject is it like a is there a part of your brain like in a in a world where money doesn't exist are there is there an in-ear monitor that you think could exist or like is it like i could have the the tesla of in-ear monitors and still not Um, want them i guess i don't i mean i haven't personally experienced it yet i've 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 used in-ear systems that are pretty expensive Mm -hmm. and they feel nice but it's just they don't cover what I need to do when I get into it with my energy. It's mm-hmm. just like they feel good in that moment. If I'm doing something simple, mm-hmm. like they're fine. They're perfectly fine. But if I'm going in, I, every time, man, I'm telling you, every single time they fall out of my head. No matter what I do, yeah. I'll put on a beanie, a well, beanie. <laughs> you know, I'll put on like it's just it, it, no matter what I do, they will not stay, man. So it's I'm, just like I, I'm telling you, man, my band has been like, Half of them are like, man, we really got to get in here. And I was like, well, I'm going to die on this hill until I can't have my decision made anymore because <laughs> I really don't want them personally, personally. But you said you tried everything. I'm laughing at the idea of like the, the Olympic wrestling headgear thing. Honestly, like even the even the the thicker ones, yeah. like the big ones, like it, it kind of works. But then I just feel like, yeah, like. Like, I just can't do what I want to do. That actually kind of feels worse. It sounds and holds better, Mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm, like, more uh, withheld to do what I want to do. That actually kind of feels a little worse. You're, uh, like, in the extreme minority of this, right? Like, almost everyone else that you drum with around. Honestly, a lot of people that I know use in-ears, a good portion of them, honestly. Um, And actually, it's funny because a lot of people come up to me once I'm done drumming. They're like, hey, man, do you use click tracks? And I was like... I don't. <laughs> and they were like, do you have an in-ear system? And I'm like, nope. And they're like, no way. But it's because I take the like the time mm-hmm. to practice and play like that. You yeah. know what I mean? And not everyone wants to do that. That's okay. But that's just how I prefer to do it. Of course, yeah. And it comes you know what to I'm the, saying? The so. art thing where I think there's, yeah, there's no one way to play the drums if yeah. that's the way that works for you in the context <laughs> of endeavor. Correct. And it's like Correct. if you were playing with an orchestral symphony, like maybe, yeah, you probably would go in yours or like yeah, some bullshit. Yeah, that, like, yeah, I probably would with that. Yeah, yeah. that's a little different. But, but it's but, like in this yeah. context for what you are doing, yes, this works. And I prefer if it monitors. Broke, then. <laughs> I'm, I, and I will say like, I, th- after that show, and that happened uh, about a month ago now, mm-hmm. Um, I haven't really had any problems like that in a long time. Like, yeah. it's been a while. Like, so far, like, I've never had that kind of a problem. Um, and it's been a few years. Mm-hmm. So I guess I was due for one. Don't get me wrong. Yep. But it's that one it will stick with me forever. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was, that was oh, brutal, brutal. You only get, like, two more of those before you buy the in yeah. <laughs> Like, how many more of these sound guys? <laughs> After that show, my guitar player yeah. was like, hey, man, you really, we really should think about getting an in-ear mm-hmm. system. And I was like... Not now, man. 
Ah, no, I don't want to hear about that right now. We can't do it because of that guy. We can yeah. do it because we want to, but like we can't let the dickhead be the one who makes the decision no, 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 for our no, That's not going to be the guy that's going to yeah. make me change. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that one. I, yeah. Yeah. I think that makes sense. I think yeah. you got to stick with what you What, what you I know, what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. You know, that's just. And ultimately, there is a layer of like, have fun. Like, there's yeah. so much, there's so much business that goes into all that we do. And I think for me, the podcast is my version of like, this is the most fun I have. And it's not that I like this more than music videos. Mm-hmm. It's just that there's so much like, effort and work that goes in music videos where here it's like kick your feet up fuck off yeah and i think there's some version yeah. of that i probably should bring back to music videos and like keep be more mindful of and there's some version of that on stage of like if all you're doing is playing to a click track like you're fucked like there dude. has to be some level of like no that's i'm tyler I'm and i'm playing drums and that's, that's what i'm saying dude that's here. how i feel every time mm-hmm. i don't treat it like uh like a job yeah. I, I treat it like, dude, this is what I love to do. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have fun. I'm not yeah. going to be held back by something that makes me feel off. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I just want to have fun. That's yeah. all I've ever wanted to do ever since I was a kid, dude. You know, I'm, I don't know. That's just how I look at it. You know, yeah. I'm very passionate about it. You know? Absolutely. So. It, it shows. I think it makes it a fun, fun situation for everyone else in the room. Uh, but it's a perfect segue for me to go then. Yeah. So where do you start learning drums? Where are you oh, as a, yeah. as a pots and pans banging and toddler? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally start? started there. Yeah. But, uh, uh, let's see. When I was six, I got uh, drum lessons in Springfield Community Music School. Cool. Okay. And then I graduated there around. Are these like 16? jazz lessons? Like, what are we talking? Originally, sorry, okay. yes, I was a jazz drummer. Originally, I started off as a jazz drummer. Okay. Um, and then I was introduced to oh my goodness, uh, Attack Attack, Stick Stickly. That song mm-hmm. blew my mind to That's the point funny. where oh my god, I got to get double bass. I don't know what that is, but I need it. <laughs> So after that, um, I was like, man, I want to I wanna do more. I want to get into heavier things. Mm-hmm. What else is out there? Well, then it goes from Memphis May Fire mm-hmm. to Acacia Strain and Pending Doom. And I'm like, oh, man, this is amazing. But at the time, this is kind of funny. I was very against blast beats. And now everyone knows me now. I love blast beats. I'm mm-hmm. all about it. We can get into that. But uh at that time, at like 16, 18, I did not want to do blast beats. I was like, nah, I'll be a breakdown drummer. That's it. No worries. No blast beats. But then <laughs> I was introduced to God Maker by Lorna Shore. Yep. That changed my life. Okay. I've never heard anything like that before. Once I heard that, I was like, I want to do that. I want to be exactly like that. I want to learn from that guy. I want to learn from that style. And uh, here we are. <laughs> it's funny that that's what eight, ten years ago, Lorna yeah. Shore, and now yeah. Lorna Shore is Look at them it. now, dude. That's oh a, my goodness, that's like they've come a good long band to pick as a reference ten years ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Um, they've taught me a lot. Damn. So I want to. Uh, so we started as a jazz drummer. Is yeah. like music in the family. Is music like an easy path for you to um, take? Or? It, it's kind of funny, man, because not really. Like uh, my sister is a ballet dancer, okay. so she does that music aspect of mm-hmm. things. Like she loves to dance. But when it comes to instrumentation, I'm the only one in my family that plays instruments, believe oh, yeah. it or not. So it's like, I, it's kind of weird, man. I was kind of like born mm-hmm. to to play drums. Like I felt like once I was like three or four, my mom was saying I was playing perfectly good beats at three or four, which. I don't know, man. I don't remember at three or four, man. But as long as I can remember, I just I've wanted to drum. You know, that's, that's all cool. I wanted to do. But no one in my family plays instruments, mm-hmm. so my mom doesn't know where it came from. So here we are. You know. You said you got your first kid at six. Uh, I got it? my first kid at ten. Ten. Okay. Ten. What's ten. that bad boy? <laughs> do you have any memory of it? Uh, it was like a really old pearl, and it was not up to par. <laughs> I made it work, man, yep. but it was not up to par. As you man. do. It was old. It was like a hand-me-down, but mm-hmm. yeah, I made it work, man. I made it work. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you start getting into, uh, like, the metal drum? You mentioned that, yeah, the jazz yeah. stuff happens, mm-hmm. and then Attack Attack happens. Mm-hmm. How are you just teaching yourself Attack Attack? Are you um, meeting friends? Where does believe it or not, man, I, when I say this, a lot of people are like, no way, dude. And I was like, wait for it. So wh- how I learned certain rhythms and beats, I watched music videos. Like, that's all I did. I, I, I watched them. I listened to them. I put headphones on. I looked at the music video. I looked at how they hit certain things and heard the sound. And I was like, okay, I think I can do that. And that's how I learned anyway. I'm just better off learning by sound. So I would look at it, stop, hear it again, and then just practice that pattern over and over until I got it right, until I could play the full music video. And that's how I learned. 
metal. I swear to God. That's that is wild. how it that's how it happened. That's uh, how it happened. I don't know if people believe me or not, man, but that's how it <laughs> you're happened. Man. Yeah, hey, hey, you're not a drummer. I'm like, well, I practice, man. <laughs> Damn, that like that makes no sense. As someone who makes music videos, it's like that is seems like the worst way to try and learn Dude, how to play the song. I don't know how is to this, explain like, it. Yeah, this uh, <laughs> dramatized version of it, right? Like it's a, a playthrough would make a lot of sense, yeah, yeah if, if that yeah. existed. Believe it or not, I didn't really look at those either. Like, I looked at them here and there, depending mm -hmm. if the band had them or not. Yeah. But uh, it was literally just a music video. Like, uh, I'm using, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, I, I'm trying to think of a, a music video that I watched. Um, It'll come to you. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I'm no Danger thing. Wild Man by Devil Wears Prada. There like that go. music video, yep. that one, I just, I followed that all the way through. And I was like, man, this is really complicated, but I want to be able to do this. And I just saw the drummer and how he was and how he was, you know, it's a music video. So obviously they put on a show for the video. Don't get me wrong, but their energy is full par. Mm -hmm. So I put that, okay, that energy with those beats and I kind of honed it into my own style. And that's how I learned. It's interesting. So. Uh, you're so expressive on stage, and I wonder if that comes because your your first ex, like uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Your first I, know, experience I was trying to think over drums, here while I was talking too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm like uh. your first like experience with drums then is with this like very dramatic cinematic version. Yeah. Of it. So I wonder if that like plants the seed as a kid of like oh that's what drumming is. Whereas if you had just learned jazz, maybe now when you're on stage, you're much more rigid and more, Dude, more it's more traditional jazz. you're like a jazz. musical therapist. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's literally it, bro. I swear to God, that's literally how it happened. I was like, this is this has got to be what drumming is, man. Like, I know what I want to hear. I'm trying to learn how to play that. And I'm seeing what they're doing. This has got to be it. You musical know? therapist is the best thing anyone's ever Dude, called. Dude, I that's swear gonna, to God. I like, appreciate you're, like, you're just honing into like, oh, wow, this is how Tyler became a drumming man. <laughs> The origin story. Oh Where's the spider bite, kid? <laughs> my villain arc. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's, 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 that's the cool. best way to put it. Yeah. That was perfect. Literally, that's, that's cool. how it started, man. It's wild that I'm laughing also when I'm on set with bands. Like mm -hmm. the, I'm interested in their physical performance. I don't really care what it sounds like, right? Like I don't. And so yeah. my, I always tell them like, hey, no one cares if you play the song right. No one's gonna know. No one's gonna watch. And you're sitting here saying that I learned how to play the songs based <laughs> on music videos, which means that there is someone <laughs> watching, and I might be lying a little bit. <laughs> Um, oh, man. For the most part, man, but, it's just showing you can do well. As long yeah. as you can hit the points, mm -hmm. you're fine. You're good. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Damn, that's a really interesting way to learn drums. I mean, yeah, I've heard the Guitar it, Heroes. I've heard yeah. the lessons. Yeah, I haven't I heard actually, music videos. Yeah. No, I mean, I play Guitar Hero here and there. It has nothing to do with drumming. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, rock band where you had the drum set, mm -hmm. I was terrible at that. Yep. Terrible. I was like, oh, this is <laughs> oh, this is hard, man. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a drummer. I'm just, should I be good at this? I don't know. It's pretty bad. I don't know. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, do you remember joining your first band then? So you, you start learning oh, music God. videos. I assume it's all your bedroom, your basement. Like, that's mm -hmm. very, uh, I hope no one's watching kind of energy. Yeah, well, I mean... That, I, it's it's so weird to think about. Like, now mm -hmm. that you said that, like, I would always practice in my basement. It was a very old cellar. My mom, God bless her, I love her to death. Uh, she would just let me play down there for two, three hours, depending <laughs> on a certain time of the day. It was like, I was six, seven years old. Like, I'm trying to figure out how to play drums here. That's and the I'm worst wailing sound. on a kid, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But my mom, you know, one of my biggest supporters ever since Plus I was a kid, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, uh, Damn, that's the worst. I've always Dude. thought of like learning saxophone or trombone or like one of these percussive instruments would be the worst one. And I never like usually people learn drums and that it's just like the snare pad. And it's like cool. Yeah. I never thought about some idiot with the full kit. Think about going. it. And plus, and it's like no one in my family does music, so it's like yep. they don't know exactly what to hear either. You know. So yeah. my mom was just like, "Oh, good for you, Tyler, but it's five thirty. Let's cut it off." <laughs> the neighbors, the neighbors, not me, but you the neighbors don't want to hear so, you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I mean. Uh, just over the years, just practicing in my basement, getting more comfortable with myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously my drum teacher at the time, uh, Jason Arnold, uh, one of my just, he was an amazing drummer who, you know, taught me how to play jazz. He was also teaching me that like, as long as you're having fun and you show that you're having fun, that's all that matters, you know? And uh, that's interesting. The show that you you're know, having fun is an interesting piece to include in that too. Well, it's like a lot of people, um, nowadays they look at it like a job, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's how a lot of people make their money. Mm -hmm. I actually support that hundred percent. Um, I'm just in it now, as long as, as long as I'm having fun, that's all I care about. Mm -hmm. You know, I, life is too short to be doing something 
working hard where you're just like, wow, I'm, I'm working, you know, 40, 60 hours a week, whatever. And I'm just not happy. You know what I'm yep. saying? It's the same thing with music. Like I'm really good at playing this, but I'm not happy playing this. Does that make sense? hundred percent. Yeah. You know what I'm the, saying? The like, interesting paradox of like how many people take on a creative job, like music, like painting, whatever, yeah. you know, fill in the blank. And they make it into a nine to five and they go so hard to get out of the nine to five only to make the one thing that's a safe haven into a nine to five. And yeah. it's like, fuck yeah. How do you run a business and still make a living off of this? But yeah, not fall into that. Yeah. Um, I had another thought of that. You were talking about. It's all right, man. Just, just think it happens. About it. Yeah. it dude, that happened to me a little bit ago, It'd man. I'm like, happening. wow, you know, you yep. really kind of have to focus on what's going on with these conversations. It's right? a weird, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. different. Um, life goes on. I wish I could rewind time and know what my thought was right there. <laughs> Uh, that would be it's the coolest fine. thing ever. It's fine, um, man. I think we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty well. Oh, uh, you're talking about uh, doing it for the love of it. And it's like, yeah, this yes. has to be for fun. And to me, it's like, yeah, if this wasn't for fun, I would have picked a different genre. <laughs> See, that's what I'm <laughs> There's saying. There's so much okay. other music okay. I would have picked where it's like, if if I didn't love doing this, like this would be a terrible use of our time. Like we're in such a niche <laughs> universe where it's like, if the goal here was just to get rich, we picked the wrong ballpark yeah. to be playing in. Uh, and I think that's also worth keeping in mind of like, yeah, we're in a pretty small pond. Like, yeah. for all, as big as our world is, like, for as big as Bring Me the Horizon is, mm -hmm. Taylor Swift sells their number. You know, no, like it's not, not even wrong. A, a, You're not wrong. Uh, yeah. For as big as they are, Post Malone would still sell numbers over yep. them day and night. And it, again, like I said, like, it's, it, depending on the genre, yeah, it makes more money. Some mm -hmm. people are connected with that a little bit more. But I'm not as happy doing that. Yeah. You know, that's why I stick to metal. Like, I could be a jazz drummer. Mm -hmm. Like, I can play jazz. I could be an alternative rock drummer. And I can play beats like that, no problem. You know, but I'm happier playing metal. Like, I actually, uh, from 18, I'm sorry, 9 to 18, I'm sorry. I was a gospel drummer for a little bit at my church. Very you cool. know, okay. I would uh, play a lot of beats there. And uh, I, that was a lot of my uh, influence at the time as well. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I just, I loved playing it, but that, that's a whole other conversation. I'm just going to say like, there's just people that were, um, downgrading me playing metal. That's the best way I'm going to say about yeah. it. It was just very, um, it was uh, hurtful, you know, it's yeah. just like, cause it's like those people were, you know, supporting me and. Don't get me wrong, man. I'm religious. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything about religion and saying like, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. But um, starting off from there, I love playing gospel drumming, but I wasn't as happy doing it anymore just because of how the people were treating it, depending on mm -hmm. making money from it. And I was like, wow, wow, this is this is the world we're living in where people are thinking about like playing a certain style and it just doesn't make money. And I'm like. What? Like, I, that's insane. That's crazy. Like, if, like, do what makes you happy, man. But if you make money, great. You know, it's like, wow. I have a lot of overlap there with people who exclusively, like, photograph or video weddings. Mm -hmm. uh, and I assume that the, the church band is probably a similar demographic of, like, they're playing a lot of weddings mm -hmm. or doing a lot of these, like, high paying events where it's like, there is a lot of status, but yeah, for what? How yeah. much do you want to be a wedding band? Like, if a, yeah. Is it worth being a drummer if you have to be in a wedding band? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, like <laughs> to I some said, people, yes. to some people, yeah. they make really good money. Yeah. So it's like, if you are happy doing that and you make good money doing it, by all means, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go for it. You know, I just, I know people have come up to me and are like, why aren't you doing any more with your drumming? Like you could, you have so much more potential to do other things. And I'm like, well, I appreciate that, but it's not something that would make me happy. You know, and I will be fighting that on a dying hill. Yeah, you know, it's just noble. like, a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I will never change that aspect for that's, as long as I live. That's a know? beautiful way to be. And yeah, hopefully yeah. that doesn't change. I think yeah. that's something I grapple with. Of like, yeah, I love doing this, but I this is my job. This yeah. is my living. And so yeah. it's like I, I need to run a business successfully, but I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to just make another nine to five. I'm See, in some sense go, of though, talking to like myself you're here. happy doing um, this. And this I am. is your, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you found what makes yep. you happy. And yeah, that's what it should be like for everyone. The, you know? the key there is then not to not to pop that bubble to me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. so tempting to like how many podcast clips like the the podcast obviously isn't my job right now. It's still yeah. very much music videos, but like in the context of the podcast or yeah, I mean, the music video is a better example than like it's like in theory I should be spending five hundred hours in every music video, and it's like I just can't like that's not sustainable. Yeah, but it's like if that's the basket I'm choosing to put all my eggs in, like I should put all my eggs in that basket. Yeah, um, so it's no, this weird thing of like, and then yeah, well is said. it is it worth 
working 14 hour days, seven days a week. If yeah. it's like, no, it's not. But where's the line then of like, when is this thing love? And when is this thing like, no, you're doing too much now. Yeah. No. And I, uh, that was uh, well said. Um, well said. I appreciate it. I don't quite know what I said, but no, um, <laughs> that's the way you're just saying, man, work. that like, if you are happier doing something that is not exactly a nine to five, but if it is a nine to five, yeah. you're all right with doing that because it makes you happy. Yeah. That's pretty much what you were saying at the end of the day. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Happy's cool. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, what does drum practice look like now? So as a kid, you're very much in your basement. You're very much yeah teaching yourself based mm -hmm. on music videos. <laughs> uh, what are you doing now to yeah to get better at drums? Well, what I do now is, let's see. So I live in Munson. I live in Munson, Mass. Mm -hmm. um, the drum set where I practice. What's your, what's your address and phone number and social security uh, no, no, number, no, no, by no. the way? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the drum set is not in Munson. So okay. I practice in Vernon, Connecticut. Um, so what I do when I'm in Munson, I have a drum pad mm -hmm. and I have my pedals. So I, uh, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. I set up some pillows. Mm -hmm. I use that on, uh, you know, just for the, uh, the, uh, bass pedals and I go up against the pillows mm -hmm. and then I'm just sitting on the couch with my cat Mishka chilling for 20 minutes every day, just doing rudiments on a pad, man. And then I'll be listening to either. Uh, click tracks just to practice with tempo. Oh, now we got click tracks. Here, that, that, that. But that's practice. That's practice to, you know, hold yeah. myself. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, or I'll just listen to my favorite tracks mm -hmm. and just kind of go over them in certain patterns. And that's how I practice now. But that's only if I'm not with the kit. Now, if I practice once a week, once, twice a week, sometimes depending what we're doing, I go there and we practice and then I'm on the kit for at least... Other than the set of music, I'm jamming, practicing, doing when I can for another 10, 15, depending. Mm -hmm. So, depends. Again, if I could have the drum set in Munson, I'd be practicing every day. I just, yeah. I sadly can't do that. Uh, when we were talking, that's, that's a really weird part about drums is how inaccessible they are to me. Yeah, where, depending on where you are. Yeah. Yeah, and I, that's not a not a thing anywhere else, really. I mean, every other instrument you can do basically anywhere. And drums are this weird one of like... You, some yeah, you can live in a place and not play it, and it's yeah, it's a very weird challenge. Yeah, <laughs> um, how like um, when you're practicing with the rudiments on the couches and the pillows mm -hmm. and the very yeah basic setup, uh, how like fulfilling does that feel? How how much do you feel like you gain from that? Is it just like is it is it a chore to get done every day, or is it like are you excited to practice the rudiments? Like what is the thought process when you sit down at this? At this some setup? good points. Wow, is it exciting to? practice and play rudiments um i'm always stuck with like video stuff like i'm terrible at practicing it right like i'm in some sense i'm always practicing and that like when i'm editing a music video i am mm -hmm. practicing right yeah. when you're playing your band songs mm -hmm. you are practicing but it's a different thing to set up and go um i'm i don't know how to do this in drum words but in video words it'd be like i don't like my color grading let me just download a clip online mm -hmm. and play with the the blues and this and see if i can okay. get a color grade right okay and in, in the band stuff like are you still is it still exciting to take that time and do that or is well, it you are your own worst critic mm -hmm. so um am i happy practicing sometimes sure. uh, i'll be honest with you uh not all the time you know yeah. i work anywhere from 10 hours to 12 hours a day you know and i'm like i gotta get home first thing i i do is shower eat my food and then i'm like man i really should practice then there's days i'm like nah, i'm not gonna do that today but uh is it satisfying Yes, at the end of it, at the end of it, I'm like, wow, I really got this done. I feel good now that I got that done because it keeps up with your stamina and your and your technique. It doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't hold you back from being kind of stiff, you mm -hmm. know? So, yeah, I would say it's satisfying because I'm also as a drummer, I'm I'm trying to get faster, you know? I'm trying to get to the big boys, you know? I'm fast, but I'm not I'm not as fast as the big guys, man. But um I'm trying. You guys I'm are trying. absurd with those numbers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, so, yeah. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm trying to get my goal is to be at least 300 BPM. If I can hit that, great. I'm right now. I can only hit like 225, and that's still fast. But like, I want to. I'm trying to get faster. You, man. you know crazy. what I mean? I had um, I had Matt from Euclid sitting in that chair saying the same thing. Like, I need to get faster. And I'm like, <laughs> how? Dirty. You guys don't go fast. Like, how? that guy's dirty. <laughs> you guys are like going a thousand miles an hour and be like, I need a thousand ten miles an hour. Like, Dude, it, what I love about his style too, he's yeah. like a good drummer, man. He, I mean, you could tell the guy practices, but he uh, does yeah. it where he's just so in control, man. Yep. And I'm trying to get like that. Like, mm -hmm. that's insane. Like, but the guy, the way you can just tell he practices, man. Yep. You can, 
you can tell, you know? So it's just like, I'm trying to get on that par, man. It's, it's like, yeah. it's not easy. Um, it's not easy. Yeah. And I think it's, yeah, it's always humbling when I hear someone like him or someone like you say, like, I'm still trying to get faster. It's like, oh, there is no, LeBron James is trying to shoot better free throw still. Like there <laughs> yeah. is no, yeah. there is no place you get to where it's comfortable. No. Like there is just always no, 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 this, no, no, uh, this no. uneasiness of like, no, it's better, Honestly, better, better, better. I, my, I think one of the things that, uh, I just kind of keep in the back of my head. It's like, you can always learn. You mm -hmm. can, there's always room for more. There's always room to learn the next step. Even mm -hmm. if I am at 300 BPM, I promise you, there's still going to be other things that I can learn, man. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Oh, yeah. There's 305 BPM. Yeah. coming right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. Plenty of room, man. Uh, how are you, like, designing your practice session? So, you mentioned that you sit down mm -hmm. for the practice pad for 20 or 30 minutes. Is there, like, a set of rudiments that you like going through? Is mm -hmm. it a go on YouTube and find the next exercise that seems interesting? Like, what do you... How are you uh, adding new material to your life? Um, well, both. Mm -hmm. There's, I'm learning certain techniques right now where I'm not um, necessarily killing my body, so to speak. There's certain techniques where you can use fingers or your wrist per se without killing yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like straining your body too much. So, yeah, I'll be learning certain techniques so I can practice with that as well as practicing certain speeds with those new techniques. So I'm comfortable. My body gets used to it. And uh, it just helps me progress, you know, so. This feels like the dumbest question, which no, makes no, it no, a no. perfect question no, no, to no, ask. No, 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 What's uh, up? Do drummers ever use, like, weighted drumsticks or, like, some kind of, like, resistance band or something that, like, is a training tool that would then make you better? Uh, like, I'm thinking of a baseball player swinging, like, a heavier bat for practice. Well, yeah, uh, yes, yes. There's drumsticks out there that have um, some, they're called grips. You know, they, it's a very uh, elastic on the tip where if you're going a certain speed, it mm -hmm. just helps with the durability so okay. you don't lose it, you know. And there's different sizes. So I usually use 7AN. It's a very light stick. Okay. Um, now I use 5ANs, which uh, the N is for um, nylon. It's for the tip of the drumstick. Mm -hmm. It's this little plastic piece that helps yeah, yeah, yeah. with rebound. So, um, and I used to never use 5ANs, but now that I'm getting a little faster, probably should have started with 5ANs. That's what a lot of people say. You should probably start a little heavier. Okay. I didn't do that, though. <laughs> so I probably should have. So I'm, I think I'm kind of adding a little bit more to my practice, kind of doing it backwards, mm -hmm. but I was comfortable using 7 ANs at the time, you know? I wonder if there's like a, I'm thinking of people who go running and it's like, if you mm -hmm. put an ankle weights on and go for your run, when you run without the ankle weights, you would run faster in theory. Oh, you're talking about Rock Lee from uh, Naruto right now, <laughs> Peter. I see, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I'm wondering is like, is there like a lead tape that you would put on a drumstick or something that you would drum with like absurdly heavy drumsticks that would never make sense on stage, but for the <laughs> sake of getting your hands and fingers faster, like it seems in my dumb brain that it would be beneficial to add. It some would. Grams it would. Drumstick. Again, I know people have actually. Uh, my boy Bryce Butler, mm -hmm. you know, great guy, amazing drummer. Mm -hmm. um, he's actually given me a tip. He drums with five Bs. They are very heavy, heavy drumsticks. And I use them, and I try to practice with them. I'm like, you practice with these? And he's like, yeah, man, it helps me. And I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> but, you know, now I'm finally taking the time to use a heavier stick, not a 5B, mm -hmm. you know, next step closer. Yeah, there, yeah. And I'm actually a lot more comfortable than I've been with a 7A with certain techniques. And I'm like, wow, you know what? Imagine if I was learning blast beats way back when with a 5A into a 5B or a 5B into a 5, whatever, you know, it's like, it depends on how you would want to go about it. But there's so many things like I'm still learning, man. I'm still learning mm -hmm. as I go and thinking on it now, you know, I really wish I did things a little differently when it came to my, how I was using drumsticks. Of course, but yeah. now I'm, I'm learning as I go for sure. I'm so. wondering there's a, with, with cameras, the, the heavier the camera is, the more stable the footage is. Mm -hmm. uh, so when like I'm holding a camera, when we add a monitor to it, when we add the big battery on the back, the heavy lens, like adding all that weight makes it more stable in my hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering with heavy drumsticks, you end up with more control than by the same metric, just gets a heavier thing. So your yeah. movements have to be more intentional, whereas a lighter stick is going to bounce around or be more, uh, more reactive to what it does off the drum head. Whereas mm -hmm. a heavier stick is like, nah, bitch, I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't yeah. care what I hit. <laughs> That's kind of like, that was my mentality for a yeah. while. Again, like the lighter stick, I could do whatever I wanted mm -hmm. quickly and it's still efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, but when it came to blast beating, I just, it wasn't giving me that, that strong hit that I wanted with that durability off the stick so I can get a little faster. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was pushing my body more to get that speed and sound with a 7A where I use a 5AN 
it's not as hard for me. I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. I could have just been doing this the whole time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're right, though. The heavier it is, the more durable it is to use when it comes to blast beating. It, it's it's incredible. And uh, I got to start taking other people's advice a little bit more because I was so yeah. stuck on that hill for a while. But uh, now I'm definitely uh, <laughs> I'm learning as I go. And mm -hmm. it's uh, That's all you can do. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's helpful. It is helpful. I'm uh I'm in the process. At some point in the near future, I'm gonna teach myself how to play the drums. I am like determined. Let me know. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that. But <laughs> I'm looking I'm looking at e kits, and it's really at this point just a matter of money. Mm -hmm. Of like, yeah, life's happening. When when am I gonna choose to invest in this thing? Where it's mm -hmm. like it's not really good. Like it's, I should spend that money on camera gear instead. But it's like no. At some point, you got to spend money on a hobby and try something. Yeah, like yeah, I'm gonna I, do it. And drums feel so impossible to me that that's part of it. Is like. I can I can play guitar enough, and not well, but like I can play it enough that I could imagine sitting down and practicing and getting comfortable with it, getting proficient with it. Mm -hmm. Drums is like I feel like I could sit a drum kit my whole life and like still have nothing <laughs> to show for it productively, uh, which makes smart. it enticing then to sit down and be like, I'm fucking, I'm gonna See, do this. See, there you go. I like that though, um, the determination. But like I'm it. laughing that like I'm I'm hoping to learn the difference between like floor toms and like <laughs> like rack toms. Like that's about <laughs> where I'm at. And here I am asking about drumsticks and the kinds no, of tips. Dude, and it's that's, like. No, Nah, man, it's, you're it's just cool you're, you're, thing you're learning you're learning a yeah. new skill yeah. set man you're just trying to get comfortable uh, with everything and like i said man let me know if you need any help i appreciate like, that when it comes to electric kit learning anything i you're appreciate my, you're, that you're a homie i appreciate that know. yeah i'm no so hard-headed that i'm gonna be terrible at asking for help but i have so many friends that i should ask yeah ask no help, don't don't be afraid to everyone ask, else man. is how to play drums a lot better than i do yeah but, no. <laughs> don't be that. afraid to ask man it's just uh you know it's it's something that like again I've learned recently to reach out to help. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, to ask for help. Yeah. Because uh, there's certain things that I've needed to practice with, and mm -hmm. I'm just so stuck in my own ways. I'm like, I'll get it, man. I'll get it. But I, I just ask a, a more talented drummer than me with certain mm -hmm. things, and I'm like, wow, I could have been learning this the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was just stuck in my own ways, man. Yep. So just you know, don't be afraid to reach out to people that care, I, man. We'll help you. I think that's brilliant. I think it's also like... Uh, I'm using Bryce as an example here. Of like, yeah, me if too. You I was using out, Bryce as an example. Oh, perfect. Too. Okay. So if you reach out to Bryce and ask about drumsticks, like he's so excited to talk about drumsticks. And to me, it's like camera. I was at a I was at Harvard last night filming an event. Oh wow! Um, there you go. But a, a student pulled me over and was like, "Is that?" Uh, and asked me a camera question uh, about you know, "Is that a Sony A7S?" Blah blah blah. And then asked about the difference in the models. And it was like a really like camera question. And I was like, "Oh hell yeah!" And we just sat and chatted <laughs> cameras for a couple minutes. There you um, go. But it's the same of like. She probably, or she was, she says she was scared to ask and was glad she did in hindsight. Mm -hmm. uh, and to me, it was like, yes, please. I want to talk about cameras. See, I've been here go. all day. I can't wait for to talk about this See, thing I've been holding go. all day. There you go. Uh, and I think that's probably true in the bigger picture of like, people want to talk about what they do. And so it's not wrong to ask the drummer, you know, it's, yeah. it's wrong no, to say, hey, can you teach me drums? Like, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> but if you can ask this thing of like, hey, what kind of drum head do you use and why do you use that kind like yeah. and um, kind of going going with what you're saying i do know people that are not like that that mm -hmm. will not help but like yeah. for the most part man a lot of people will help mm -hmm. like it's like i'm sure like they're like hey wow there's another person that wants to learn drums yeah let me help him out he's using my you know like my skill and he wants to you know use that for his for himself in some yeah. way you know it's like yeah, dude, help them, you know? It's and like, how would you feel if you wanted to learn something? And that guy was like, nah, dude, I'm good. I'm like, oh, well, whatever, I'll go yep. fuck myself, whatever. <laughs> you yeah. know, but, you know, it's like, it, it doesn't, it, it's not hard to be kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not hard, you know? Just yeah. if people want to learn, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to help them out. Yeah, and I think there's a, the Simple. implicit thing for me with cameras. It's like, I know how happy they made me and all the great things they've done for me. So mm -hmm. if I can give someone else one percent of that advent advantage it's like cool let yeah. me that's a great investment of my five minutes to help them suffer through get through a month of whatever i have to suffer, <laughs> suffer through or something through. you know like there's you can expedite your learning so much right so yeah. much of learning is trial and error and if you could just synthesize that you could help so many people <laughs> more than yeah. like making everyone else go the same trial and error right yeah. so much of learning is so basic so much of what i'm going to learn on drums is so pathetically basic and of course that's where i have to start right but like yes if there yes. was a way that you could inject five minutes of tyler o'brien into me it would save me a month, right? And like, it's, it's, I think it's worth keeping in mind of like how little these investments can pay off so yeah. big for someone yeah, else. Yeah, man, listen, I, if I could start off playing blast beats right off the bat, I wish, bro. I just got, I honestly, I just honed certain skills when it comes to blast beats within the last mm -hmm. six years, maybe. You know what I mean? Damn. I've been drumming for a long time. So yeah. it's like, 
Trust me, man. It takes time. It, it's drums is a very slow instrument to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, you cannot rush it. You know, it's a, it's, it's, it's gonna take time. But once you get it, it will. It's uh, satisfying for sure. Um, well, you got it now, King. Yeah. Uh, and now <laughs> we're making good. music videos. <laughs> uh, I wanted to chat on the music video. So Endeavor's yeah. got a couple out. Um, I believe all through Eric DiCarlo, who is the king. He's been on here as well. I've loved, yeah, picking his brain. I've always loved looking up to him and, yeah, getting a sense of what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Um, In your opinion, which is is your favorite of the three videos? Is it three, I think, maybe for Endeavor? Maybe I'm underestimating Uh, that. uh, No, Um, you're right. There's as of now. The church, the house, and the the day in the life, wherever that would have been, like a warehouse or something. The day in the life was... That was at a warehouse. Yeah. That was at a warehouse. I was going to say, I think... I'm gonna say the warehouse one. That was that was fun. Okay. So day in the life. Day in the life. I yep. think that was my favorite one, man. I think that was my what stands favorite. out. What stands out about that one? Um, I feel like we had a little bit more room to work with, mm-hmm. and we were all kind of uh, working together in that video, like uh, yeah. group shots. Yep. You know, that was a very like okay, we're all gonna do this together, and mm-hmm. there were singles. Don't get me wrong, but I just felt like everyone was a little bit more comfortable because mm-hmm. there was a little bit more room, and uh, it was kind of like a homie sesh that for that one. I'm not saying the other. You know, ones of weren't. Course. Yeah. But I just, I feel like that one's a little bit more comfortable for me, mm-hmm. I guess, uh, personally. I sick, yeah. Comfortable. Uh, was that a treatment that you guys, did you guys like go to the warehouse with him of like, we want a, like a warm, a gold video, we had these lights, or was that something where you said, we have a song and Eric said, cool, let's, let's uh, try that this. That was Eric being the master of his yeah. craft, man. The lights yep. was all him. Yep. I was like, man, this guy already knows what's up, man. We, I mean, yeah. we were just, we told him we had a spot, it was for free. Um, That's a good budget. And, yeah, yeah, right. I like, I like and, hearing uh, that. Yeah, he just came up with those ideas, and I was like, "Absolutely, man!" He's you know, man. Uh, you know, he's a man. He's he's a master of his craft. He is. So it was really nice to just kind of be comfortable and do what yeah. you got to do without stressing. Oh, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna do it? Where are we gonna go? How's it gonna look? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just Eric DiCarlo. No worries, man. No stress. You already yep. know it's gonna be good. You already know he's gonna take care of you. You know, he's always been uh, really professional at that and just a homie. As well, so I'm uh, I'm curious about the little things that make him so great. So I think uh, when I think about view music videos, I'm mm-hmm. always interested in like the the tips that people can do for under five bucks or something. Of like mm-hmm. with Eric, I, I can't replicate what he does. I can't replicate how he does it. Like I can mm-hmm. emulate it. Mm-hmm. I can take advantage of it, or I or not take advantage of it. I can take note of I it. I can take I yeah, yeah influence yeah. from it. Um, but one little thing I heard from a uh, someone from a director was like. Mm-hmm. I bring snacks to my videos and that makes every like just having water and snacks and candy and like just making sure people are set up makes life so good. And it's, it's 20 amazing. bucks, right? Like it costs <laughs> nothing in yeah. the context of this wow. day, but it makes everyone's life so much better just to have like, especially with the band guys, right? For me, yeah. it's like, I'm working all day. How do I keep you guys occupied? It's that's actually a really good point, stuff. man. And it was oh, like, man, yeah, bring awesome. a cooler, po- toss some wow. ice in a cooler, put a 12 pack of whatever in there wow. and everyone's gonna be so happy. Uh, is there something that stands out at Eric of like a, uh, yeah, something he does throughout the day that just makes your life so easy is he show you the takes in a way, I'm, I don't know, yeah. I'm spitballing of like, is there anything that stands out as things that Eric does where it's like, oh, that's a little thing that doesn't seem valuable, but damn. Um, I mean, kind of like what you were saying, he'll show you the shots of mm-hmm. what you just, you know, what you just did. And if you're not comfortable or he feels like you could do better, mm-hmm. he's not afraid to tell you, you yeah. know? And I kind of like that though, you know? Cause like I, I'm sometimes I'm in my own he- own head sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I feel comfortable about that one. Mm-hmm. And he kind of just feels off you, man. If you weren't comfortable with that take, he'll just be like, yeah, man, let's just do it again, man. I, I'm sure you could do better. Let's just do it again. But he's like, he doesn't like, I don't know. Like the way I kind of like about it, he just, he, he doesn't force you. Mm-hmm to do the part where you're kind of straining yourself. Like he wants you as comfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just, I know you've been fine. You know, I'm just like, it's just like, even as a kid, I just, I, I remember I did a couple videos. I did a long story short. I did a, Mm -hmm. a commercial for big Y when I was a kid (laughs) and I swear to God, this was a long time ago, man. This was a long time ago. And, uh, I was do, I uh, played the theme song for big Y or whatever. And, uh, the guy that, uh, dude, I know I was a kid, man. I know I was a kid. But the way this guy came at me, man, I was like, wow, dude. This is, this is like, I don't even want to be here anymore. Like, he was like, he was like coming at me, man. And I was like, I was like 
That's 12 or 13 years old. I'm like, this is my first time being on something oh like this. You don't God. have to bring me down, man. Like, he was coming at me. Like, yep. And I just remember that, just that feeling. I'm like, wow, I really, I, I came here because you guys asked me to do this job, you know? And you're telling me to do certain things that I don't really understand what you're saying. I'm 12 years <laughs> old, man. You know what I'm saying? So I just remember just feeling like I was just Jeez. really uncomfortable. I was very uncomfortable. I will, Yeah, um, it just, that stuck with me. I'm you know? always really curious about that line because I feel like I've been uh, in, not so much on video sets, but in uh, yeah. recording studios uh, where someone is uh, in the booth. So it's vocals normally where I feel mm -hmm. like I observe this. And the producer, in my mind, is like making them like suffer. It's like the person is singing the thing and the producer's going, no, there's more. You can, mm -hmm. right? And I'm always interested on that line because in, in the example I'm thinking of, it was mm -hmm. one where I sat there going, Ugh, I don't like this. And the person in the booth left going, that was the best session of my life. Thank God wow. he pushed this out of me and pulled this out of me and got this going in this right direction. And I'm always curious of where that line is. And it's such a fine line. Mm -hmm. It's different for Tyler than it is for the next person that I'm going to yeah. work with. But mm -hmm. uh, it's always a really weird one of like, how much do I say, hey, Tyler, you can do better. And how much is it like, no, great job, dude. You killed it. I'll, I'll clean well, up the mess later. That's where I guess you as, you know, the person who's kind of directing the entire thing, that's mm -hmm. where you need to decide yeah. what's good and what's bad. And as the, as the band member trying to do their job for you, it's like, I see where you're coming from because you're not trying mm -hmm. to be a dick, but it's your yeah. job. It's like, yeah. hey, man, if you feel like this take was not good and I thought it was, that, then my, it doesn't matter. My my opinion of that is out the door, dude. I don't do what you do. I don't mm -hmm. edit what you do. I don't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I will follow what you say, you know? It's like, that's how it should be, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, it, you're there to do a job, you know, and yep. uh, you're trying your best to do it with also not being a dick about it, but yeah. professional and also yep. friendly. So it's that is that's something that you will kind of have to kind of figure out a little bit more. Yeah. But uh, yeah, don't don't be too afraid to kind of just be real. It's you know, a, it's like I see what you're saying, though. Mm -hmm. Just don't be afraid to be yourself and be like, listen, you guys do good. I want to do another one. Let's just get it done. You That's know what I'm the saying? Key, right? It's, you know? it's being honest and it's being consistent. That's what so I mean. Like, it's okay sure. to be yeah. honest, man. Just, yeah. you got to be real. Um, it is. It is 100% that. And I think, yeah, people generally want that from me. And it's like, they, they're paying good money for music That's video at the bottom. Like the end yeah. of the day, it's like, yeah, they're willing to put in three more minutes of playing the song. <laughs> it's not a, that was yeah, another man. thing. Yeah, when yeah, I was, yeah. When yeah. I was first starting, it's like, oh, I don't want to burden them. And it's like, no, they don't, like, they're so no, happy to play. No. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dude, so, they're for a video. Yeah. You, you know, it's like, yeah. you got to do eight, seven, two, four, whatever takes, yeah. man. Just as long as it gets done, you know, yeah. Yeah, everyone's happy. You know, I think it's always the, the other place like, that gets fascinating to me is like everyone's A plus looks very different. Right. Yes. So when I'm on yeah. set with Tyler, it's like, I know I can push you pretty far and you're going to get there. And mm -hmm. sometimes you get on set and it's like, I've been with drummers. So it's like, I think you're scared to hit your drum set. And it's like, I can't solve that in the next okay. six hours. Yep. So how far can I push you towards Tyler O'Brien? Okay. Because I can't make you Tyler right now, but it's like, how can I just okay. get 10% more out of okay. you? So this is where I would be like, Hey man, I know you're kind of afraid to hit your kit here, <laughs> but I, I really need you to show you that, you know, you're having a good time here, you know, mm -hmm. that you're not afraid. It's okay. It's all yeah. right. I know you're kind of nervous, but don't worry about it, man. If you mess up, we'll just do it again. You know, so that's where you yeah. kind of got to make them a little bit comfortable, yep. you know, because with, I mean, dude, you've done videos with me too, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel very comfortable with you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, we've never had issues where I'm like, oh, okay, man, you know, you're coming at me for what? I was wailing it. Do you want me to hit it harder? No. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like you and I had an understanding where, you know, you know that I'm going to hit it enough to where it's like, I'm going to get it, the hit mm -hmm. there and it's going to look good. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And if someone can't do that, like hitting it hard to where you need it to be, then you just got to, that's where you got to be real, man. You got to be like, listen, man, I'm not trying to come at you. Just if you're nervous, it's all right. Don't worry yeah. about it. If you mess up, we'll do it again. But that's like I said, you got to make them comfortable because yep. I've seen it too, man. Like I, I get it. And I, um, you know, I, sometimes it happens with me too. Like depending on the video, like I've done enough, but I, mm -hmm. sometimes I get nervous too. Yeah. And I'm like, yep. you know, I, I feel like I could do a little bit better, but then that's why like I was saying, you know, yeah. the director, he'll be like, no, nah, dude, that was great. And I was like, okay, but that's where you were saying everyone's A plus is a little different, Yeah. you know, but, uh, kind of what you were saying, man, just agreeing with you, 
you got to be real with them. Yeah. You got to be real. You got to be honest. Yeah. And it's not you being a dick. It's you being real. That's yep. it. That's all it is at the end of the day, man. Hell yeah. Um, last little, last little piece here. We're coming yeah. up right on our, kind of right in our hour, which yeah. is, which is fantastic. We're crushing yeah. it. Um, I want to chat about promoting a band in 2023. Ah. So we touched on this a little bit and I'm curious of like, uh, what is Endeavor doing to grow? I guess is the, the very surface level of this. Uh, and I know, yeah, there's ads, there's reactions, but yeah, what are you doing day to day? You're playing shows, you're putting out music. What are you guys doing day to day to make sure the ship, the ship keeps going on this, this right train? Um, so what we're doing is one, trying to kind of save money. Yeah. So we're doing um, a lot of ads, a lot of um, um, promoting ourselves. So in a way we're saving money, but we're also hitting a certain amount of people that like that sound, whether mm -hmm. it's Spotify, YouTube, yep. um, et cetera. And uh, Mark is a wizard. Let me tell you, he, you got to get him in here because he can explain it a little bit better than I can. Hell yeah. But um, self-promotion is definitely um, helpful. Not everyone can do it, obviously. You know, yeah. some people obviously go to the people who can do that. But um, Mark is, uh, he, he's a wizard, man. He can do it all. And we've been getting pretty good numbers because of that. Is he the guy um, running like the YouTube ads? I was, I was yep, the music um, I think we are mainly focusing on Spotify ads, if anything, yeah, right okay. now. I think that's the main focus right now, and yeah, I, it's doing pretty well cool. from from what um, he's been saying. So hell yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and there's also the, the reaction saying, channels, but, the other piece I thought was yeah, really interesting. Yeah, so hardcore Keem. Yep. So uh, funny story. Okay. I was in a band with him for about a month maybe two online for a little bit it was uh me him uh another guy um i don't know what happened to him i haven't seen him how long ago is this this was um i want to say maybe six years ago now okay okay yeah so it, it's been a while man yeah. but he's good people man but Hell we yeah. were we were all talking about we were talking about who would be, would do what it never went anywhere but uh it was just the thought of just being in a band together was actually pretty cool man yeah. and he's a great guy man yeah. so but uh yeah so back to the reaction video um that was kind of wild because uh when i saw him do the reaction video i was like whoa man that's awesome man and then he was like even saying he's like oh you know tyler funny story mm -hmm. we're in a band together and that's i was funny. like oh my god he remembered <laughs> you know so but uh we haven't officially met obviously okay. but uh He's good people, man. It was a That's good cool. feeling to see him react to a video. That was it's cool to sweet. watch. Uh, I had the thought that, like, um, I had told the story on here once, so I'll tell yeah, an yeah, abbreviated yeah, version of it. it. Um, but I don't really get to see people watch my stuff, right? So I work very hard in this music video, and I send it to you. And then I get a text back that usually says, great, can we change the shot at 202 to another shot? And for like, the music video? For Yeah, for anything. Okay, Just, okay. Yeah, as I, as I create okay. content in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I post it on the internet, and then that's kind of it. I don't really get the, the feedback from it in okay. a lot of ways. Um I've had experiences where I filmed for, I was at UConn filming for their like spring concert and I made like the hype video to play on the Jumbotron before it. Okay. So before the show, last year is like recap plays on the Jumbotron and I get to watch 20,000 people like watch it and be like, ooh, oh. ah. And it was this really cool moment of like, oh fuck, I've never like seen people like my stuff. And it was wow. really cool to watch, like wow. to have this kind of like neutral reaction. Like they don't know it was me, right? They're not yeah. like, it's not my friend who's saying, oh, good job, Peter. It was like just, a stadium full of people who don't give a fuck about me admiring what I did. And that was cool to be anonymous there. I had the thought that like on stage, you have a version of that, but like, it's not quite the same because you're playing drums. So you don't really get to just like consume the audience. Mm -hmm. When you get to watch hardcore Keem react to the thing, you really get to just sit back and like watch someone consume all you've created and poured your love into it. And there's mostly yeah. something really cool. to like, you're not playing the drums. You're not in this hot, sweaty room. Like you can mm -hmm. just be in the comfort of your living room. Yeah. And you get to yeah. watch someone really digest and engage with what you made. Like that's yeah. the coolest thing to it. It was a really good feeling, man. I was like, wow, man, I can't believe he's actually reacting to this video, mm -hmm. man. It was a good feeling. Yeah. It was actually a really good feeling. Yeah, and it's cool. Yeah, that you're just not in, not involved with it, I guess. Is the, yeah, the it was kind of nice, too, because it was like I didn't have to do anything, you know? And yep. it was just like naturally happened. So yeah. I was like, wow, man. And wow, it's like... Somebody actually really liked this, and it had to be him, of course. Yeah. And I was like, wow, man. It's like small world. Small yeah. world, you know? Incredible, dude. So, Hell yeah, dude. Well, yeah. That was a great place this to was awesome. put a little bow on this, dude. I appreciate yeah. you coming through. Thank uh, you for this having has been me, man. Blast of the century. Seriously, uh, thank you, dude, man. This was awesome, dude. Uh, we got you. some shows coming up, Endeavor yeah. shows. Uh, for anyone who's too dumb to remember what we said at the start of the show, <laughs> uh, 
What are, where are shows coming up? What we got coming up? So we got again October 27th at a skate park in I want to say New London. I could be wrong about the yeah, it's time. I could be wrong. It's They'll in Connecticut. It yeah. um, but uh, November 4th is going to be in New Hampshire, and that is a stacked bill. Local, that is going to be an amazing fest. show. Hell I just yeah. can't think of all the bands off the top of my brain, Dude, but uh, that know. will be a good show. <laughs> they, know. Be a good show. <laughs> they know who they are. <laughs> uh, my man, I appreciate you coming out. Oh, uh, episode 36 is in the bag, dude. Right. Hell yeah.